right, Shalom. I'm coming out Sam Banya Shalala and I thank you all the Banya Shalala. All right, we're coming out of Lions in camp, coming with a quick lesson before we get started. We want to give all the glory and praise to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, the Prophet Jonah in the Hebrew. I say, Kyle, Kyle, a lion, a lion, la, la, Yahweh, Yahweh, Bahashem, Bahashem, Yahweh, Shai, Yahweh, Shai, Bahashem, Bahashem, Ha, Ha, Raka, Raka, Kadash, Kadash, Ma, 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 Ma. Double honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone, our elder Harold Wine as well. And salutations to the Aki that are pushing the truth and sincerity and the truth. And peace and blessing to the men, women, and children that believe in the name of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh, Shai. Right. In this lesson, is going to be some clarification on, um, uh, when it when it refers to. Uh, with the angels uh, with wings in the Bible, um, in the scriptures, all right? So the angels don't have, like, wings out of the back, like, coming out of their back, like, you know, how you see, like, with Cupid or, or something like that. That that goes all back to Greek mythology, man. Renaissance art. Yeah, Renaissance art. That goes all to the ways of Esau. So just for edification purposes, man, uh, we want to clarify that point. So if anybody's teaching that the angels have wings on their body, going off man all right this is john chapter 4 verse 20 verse 23 it said but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the father in spirit and in truth for the father seeketh such to worship him yahweh is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth all right so that's the and, and we worship in the spirit of yahweh shai and that's how we're being able to be drawn back to the father but the scripture says no one can come to me unless my father draw him Right, so they, he has to draw you with the spirit of the truth, the Holy, the Holy Spirit, man. Right. All right, so we just want to give some, go into some edification, um, for a clarification, edification on what the reference of wings uh, mean in the scriptures. All right, this is a Sirach, three and twenty-one. Seek not out the things that are too hard for thee, neither search the things that are above thy strength. Right, so now, like everybody has to um, start out with the milk when they come into the truth. You know what I'm saying? And from the milk, you grow because you, you, um, you start out as a babe in the truth, man. No matter how old you are, when you first come into the truth, you are a babe. You cannot put new wine in old bottles. You got to pour out everything that, that you once thought you knew in the beginning before you came into the truth, all right? And until and you're able to eat the meat, don't seek out the things that are too hard for you, too hard for your understanding. So stay, stay in your lane and stay in your proper perspective. So that, therefore, you can seek the milk because the milk is very important, just like the meat and the mysteries are important. All right, so so just like Apostle Har like likes to say, sometimes we got to go back to the basics. All right, to strengthen ourselves in the milk. All right, to make sure you know what I'm saying. Uh, keep our mind refreshed on the things that we learned when we first came in the truth. You know what I'm saying. So we can we stay vibrant in the truth. All right. So there's no need to jump straight into the meat if you're not ready. All right, wait, wait upon that time, and the Lord will increase you. Don't try to exalt yourself. All right. Yeah, it's a rock 20 and verse 5. There is one that keepeth silence and is found wise. All right, so I myself, a testimony myself, um, you know, I've, I've been in been in situations where it's a slip of the tongue, right? Um, but um, there's one that slip of the tongue, but not a <clears throat> slip in, uh, of the heart, roughly paraphrasing. Um, so, but we got to be mindful that everything that's spoken out of our mouth, because we don't want to cause a stumbling block for other individuals, like especially if we, if we have a, a respective place in this truth and we have a lot of younger brothers or anybody that looks up to us in the truth, right? The words we say out of our mouth, they're going to take heed to those words. And if you're falsifying or saying something that's false, all right, you could cause somebody to go off just by a mistake. So if you don't know something about a topic, don't even speak on it. And what the best thing to do is go and study that topic and then clarify yourself the next time you're out teaching or the next time you do, or do a video on it. Study upon it, get the proper breakdown, the proper perspective, proper context of the scriptures and do a video on it. Once you, once you learn and, and, and the Lord puts the spirit on you until you have that understanding. Come on. And it's back in Sirach 20 and 5, there is one that keepeth silence and is found wise. All right, so the, and that's what a wise man would do. If he doesn't have a full understanding of something, he's going to keep silence, all right, until he has that understanding. And that's what a wise man would do, all right? And another, by much babbling, becometh hateful. All right, becometh hateful because that's a hateful thing to put a lie into the minds of the people that truly believe in Yahweh, by Shema, Shai, to the elect, all right? Some man holdeth his tongue because he have not to answer. 
Um, some man hold his tongue because he have not the answer. And that's the wise thing to do. Because you don't have the answer. If you don't know the answer 100%, just hold your tongue. Don't say nothing. Would you rather not add or take away from the word? Huh? Huh? Good point, bro. And some keep him silence, knowing his time. Some keep his silence, knowing his time. So know your time. Knowing, knowing, like, go pray on it. That's what I do. Personal testimony. I pray on it. If there's something I don't understand, I pray on it. Then I go to the elder. Because, because not everybody's going to be able to open this book and look and break everything down. Some of us are going to have to be taught. But even with that, if there are some people that you can t you can read it to them front and backwards and give them the proper breakdown and everything, they still won't be able to get it and understand. So the fact that you have to be taught the truth does not make you any less of the person that got to the water before you and is told teaching you how to drink. You know? All right. Hey, a wise man will hold his tongue till he see opportunity, but a babbler and a fool will regard no time. All right. Well, and, and somebody that's trying to profess himself being wise. All right, now this puffed up with charity edify it, and that's what we have to be cheerful. All right, matter of fact, let me see if I can find that real quick. Let's first and second. Um, No, I uh, said so knowledge puffed up. We know that we all have knowledge, but knowledge puffed up, charity edified. You can look it up on the wall. Let's see. Oh, I got it. This is First Corinthians chapter eight, verse one. It said, "Now touching things offered unto idols." We know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffed up, but charity edify it. And if any man think that he is not, that he hath knowledge, it knoweth anything, he knoweth not yet as he ought to know. All right? So, you know, a lot of times we got to examine ourselves to, to see if we have the proper understanding of certain things before we bring them out or before we even speak on them. Man, if you don't, if you don't have the true understanding or full understanding of it, just jump over. Don't just wing it, man. Because you'll find yourself being at fault. All right, putting stumbling blocks out there. All right, just by a slip of the tongue. All right. So I'm looking at the All right. So going into for edification purposes, going into um, the proper breakdown of the wings being the chariots in the scriptures. All right. This is Ezekiel 1, and we'll start at verse 4, mm -hmm. and straight to the point. Uh -huh. And I looked, and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north. All right, so that's a wind, a, wave, a tumultuous wind coming out of the sky, all right? A great cloud, chariot. Yeah, our cloud, which means, all right, hold on, hold on, hold on. With that being said, a great cloud, right? And how is your shot going to return? All right, this is um, Revelation chapter 1, verse 7. It says, All right. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, even they also which pierced him. All the kindreds of the earth shall well because of him, even so a month. All right. <clears throat> Those clouds that he's coming in is, is a covering, which means a chariot. The same clouds that was a, 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 um, a, um, a covering by day and a light by night when we came out of Egypt. All right. It's quick interjection. Huh. This number is 9 to 16. So it was <coughs> always the cloud covered it by day and the appearance of fire by night. Huh, just to back the brother up, man. Found in numbers 9 to 16. All right. Huh. How in the appearance of hey, the chariots uh, in the daytime will be seen to be a, a, a cloud. All right. And, and at night. All right. Uh, appearance by fire. Mm -hmm. All right. And, and, and covering from the sun, covering from the scourge of the tongue. I mean, scourge of the sun. And, and, and a light, you know what I'm saying, at night. All right? and, and that's spiritual too, you know? And it's back in Ezekiel 1 and verse 4. And a fire enfolding in itself. Let you start over. God. It's back in Ezekiel 1 and 4. <laughs> and I looked, and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud, and a fire enfolding itself. And 
and a brightness was about it. And out of the mist thereof, as the color of amber, out of the mist of the fire. All right, so, all right, so when, 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 when the Lord shows up, now this isn't his fleet right here. But when the Lord shows up, all right, when those chariots show up, mind you, that they're going to start burning, the, they're going to burn the air. That's how powerful they're going to be, man. They're going to be consuming what this atmosphere, <clears throat> the elements of this atmosphere, all right? All right, so now in the midst of that, uh, you're going to have the lights of the chariots, all right? All right, all right go ahead. Verse 5, also out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures. Mm -hmm. And this was the, with the and this, Salakia, was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man. Oh, they had the likeness of a man. Right? The likeness of a man. It says, it says, also out of the midst came the likeness of four living creatures. And this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man. So this is what's inside those chariots. The likeness of a man. You can get um, and creatures just means creation. We're uh, considered creatures also. You can get Romans 18 and 20 real quick, my Bible shot. Uh, this is Romans 18. 8. 8. 8. So like, so like 8 and 20. All right. It might be 8. All right. No, no. 8 and 20. That's it. For the creature was made subject to vanity. Ooh, the creature was made subject to vanity, made, sub made subject to sin. That's talking about us. Talking about in the beginning, the Adamites. All right, read again, Baba Kusha. Romans 8 and 20. Romans 8 and 20. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who have subject the same in hope. All right, go up to um, Baba Kusha, verse 18. What does it say? Uh, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared. All right, no, all right go ahead. Let's start at 19, Baba uh, This verse 19. So let's go into that creature, what it's talking about. All right, so creature just means creation. Because we're considered creatures also. That doesn't mean they look like monsters or anything like that, okay? Uh, what, like Esau? All right, we're ready for that, all right? We're subject to sin and hope. So now we were subject to sin, all right? This is the control. Yahweh by two times time to show us that he's the power, and he put us in a position of hope. So the only way we can get out of here is through hope. And what is a, what is the synonym for hope? Faith. Faith. All right, so he set it up for us. The only way to be, be able to get out of here is to turn back to him and have faith because we he took our he turned his face away from us, so now we were powerless. Now he turned his face back by sending the spirit of Yahweh Shai, pouring the spirit of Yahweh Shai down here upon this earth. All right, and you go back to um, so that's just going into the point of the creatures. They're not the angels, don't look like. Freaking men, they damn so don't look like Esau. Uh, they look like men. Uh, I mean, I mean, slacking. The angels look like men. The what? Not monsters. Not creatures, monsters. Not aliens, monsters. So or, or aliens or yeah. nothing like that. They damn so don't look like Esau, and they damn so don't look like Cupid. Yeah. You know, Cupid, yeah, with wings on their back, right. running, running around, flying butt naked. All right, yeah, yeah that's all going back to Greek mythology, man. And this is Ezekiel 1 and verse 5. Also, out of the midst thereof, came the likeness of four living creatures. And this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man. So imagine imagine you seeing, you, this is your, imagine you being Ezekiel, and this is your first time seeing this. All right, they had the likeness of a man. So he's looking in the sky, and he's seeing the elements burning and everything, and he's seeing fire in the midst of a fire, God. lights in the midst of a fire. Like, I and know it's creatures up there. He's like, I'm like, man, what is that up there? Like, they look like men. They look like men. Like, like, wait, I know I can't. He said that he referenced him to man because he's never seen a man in that position before. God. He's never seen a man in the air on a vessel flying that's consuming the elements of the earth. So he was like, man, those look like men, but it's my, can they be men? Because he's never seen a man do that before. So she said, this is the likeness of the creatures. It's the likeness of a man. God. That's right? why you, you take the example of uh, Yahweh Shah having that in Revelations 1 and, and 13. God. God. Right? Of, 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 of his of his uh, body. All right? How to describe his body, man. It's kind of describing his likeness. God. All right. Hey, and Yahweh Shah, he doesn't have wings, man. It didn't describe that in Revelations 1 and 13 being the point. All right. All right. And all right. He's in his glorified, he's already in his glorified form. Mm -hmm. All right. And John, uh, all right, this is um, Revelation chapter 1, verse 1. It said, The revelation of Yahweh Shah Hamasiah, which Yahweh gave unto him to show unto his servants the things which must shortly come to pass. And I'm going to skip over to verse 13. In the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like to the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and a girdle about the paps with a golden girdle. Now, Yahweh Shai, 
being the top, all right, angelic being, all right, the top messenger of Yahweh, right? This is his image in the description. It doesn't say anything about him having wings, all right, on his body. All right, it says, verse 14, verse 13, it says, And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and they girded about the patch with a golden girdle. His head and his hair were like white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet were like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice was as the sound of many waters. All right, so it's giving a, strip, a description of, of, a, of an angelic, powerful force, all right, Yahweh Shai, right, and his likeness, him, him, him looking like us. But in his glorified body, which we're going to have that Lord willing, I'm part of that number, we're going to be glorified in that day. All right? When he shows up to give us um, crowns. All right? I'm back in Ezekiel. Come on. It's back in Ezekiel 1 and 5. Also out of the midst thereof came likeness of four living creatures, and this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man, and every one had four faces. And everyone have four wings. Right. All right. Boom. So everyone have four faces, meaning duties, and everyone have four. four every, all right. There are four generals. All right. And everyone have four wings. All right. So now that's them being in a, a B formation. The head. All right. And then uh, uh, um, two on this flank and two on that flank. Okay. All right. Set up in battle formation or like uh, a meeting. All right. Go ahead. Verse seven. And their feet were straight feet. All right. And their path was straight forward, righteous path. All right. Going to handle business. Okay. All right. And the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot. So now this is what them, this was a, what was under them, them being on top of the chariot. This is the bottom. All right. Okay. Because the Lord chose a, the cloud, the winds, and, and the cloud was the chariots to mm -hmm. ride upon, okay. not wings to uh, ultimately to fly upon, uh -huh. even though man it can fly. Right. All right. Right. So verse seven. Yeah, he told the wings of the wind. Right. Con, the wings, wings of the, of the wind, wind, man. Not actual, literally wings. Right. Con. And their feet were straight feet, and the sole of their feet were like the sole of a calf's foot. Con. And they sparkled like the color of burnished brass. All right. So up under these chariots, right, were, were glowing, and they had the feet of like a calf's foot. So it had like a little, it was circle, and and you know how a calf's foot is, and it had that little in, like groove in it. Like right. V shape because like it's uh, that's that that's that uh that cloven gap that, that cloven. That underneath the uh the calf's foot. Con, con. Verse eight, and they had the hands of a man under their wings on their four sides. All right, no, all right, real quick, real quick. Uh, go back to seven again. Read seven again, and then go um second Samuel. And their feet were straight feet, mm -hmm. and the sole of their feet were like the sole of a calf's foot. And they sparkled like the color of a burnished brass. All right, so they were sparkling and they were spinning. All right, dazzling, man. All right, and they were and they were in the, they were had the circle around and they had the little indention in it. So it was like the the sole of a calf's foot. If you look up, if you Google what up under a calf's foot, that's what you're gonna see. And this is what this is what this is what they were riding up on top of. All right, and this is Second Samuel chapter twenty-two, and I start at verse seven. In my distress, I call upon the Lord. All right, this is our, I think it's King David. Is it oh, saying? It's King David. All right, this is King David saying a prayer, and it's going to describe how, in the vision that how Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, how Yahweh, um, he delivered him out of the hands of the, uh, his enemies. Right, the right. Philistines. Go ahead. And it's uh, verse 7. In my distress, I call upon the Lord and cry to my power, and he did hear my voice out of his temple, mm -hmm. and my cry did enter into his Ears, right? And the and the how about you? I was trying to hear our cries now, man. God, hey, so it entered into the ears of the Lord of a Sabbath oath, Sabbath oath, right? Armies, the Lord of armies, man. Troops. So when he shows up with the host of heaven, he's talking about the armies, the angels, man. When he shows up with their wings, man, the wings meaning the chariots, and the angels truly represent the feathers, right? All right, come on, all right, go ahead. Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations of heaven moved and shook because he was wroth. Mm. There went up a smoke out of his nostrils God. and fire out of his mouth devoured. Coals were kindled by it. God. He that's, the, that's the fierce anger of the Lord. Go ahead. God. He, he bowed the heavens also and came down and darkness was under his feet. God. And he rode upon the cherub and mm. did fly. He rode upon the cherub and did fly, man. Go ahead. 
and he was seen upon the wings of the wind. Seen upon the wings of the wind, man. That's the chariots, man. The cherub, he did fly. He was seen upon the wings of the wind. All right. Not, not the, the he didn't have the wings of the wind on his back. No, he was seen upon the wings of the wind. All right. That was it all the way to 11. Verse 11. Yeah, God, that was it. All right. Um, All right. Yeah, Psalms 18 and 10. And this is Psalms. Chapter 18 and verse 10. And he rode upon a cherub and did fly. Yeah, he did fly upon the wings of the wind. Mm -hmm. right. So that's just backing up that scripture that I just read. read. Okay. All right. So, so we reference to the Lord of Armies, Lord of Sabbath Oath, and um, on how Yahweh Shim Yahweh is going to show up. Come on. All right. Like you guys just stated, man, hey, the wings would actually represent the feathers. Actually, uh, I uh, mean, the, the, the angels would uh, actually represent the feathers. So, uh, you know, and you can see that in uh, Psalms 91. Come on. All right. Uh, let me get a scripture real quick. Uh, actually, Yahweh Shai is showing up in, um, in the name of Yahweh. All right. Because we say Yahweh by Shim Yahweh Shai. But you know what I'm saying? We that's how we speak to Yahweh. Con, con. In the name of Yahweh Shai, con. please grant this to me. But in reference of what's gonna happen, Yahweh Shai is coming in the name of uh, of of of, his of, of, of his father. Con. All right, he's cause he said he came to do his father's business. Con. All right, says so he's gonna come in the glory of his father and his glory, the glory of his father, mm. and the glory of the holy angels, man. Con. All right, so this is um I want to get Psalms 68 and 17. It says the chariots of Yahweh are 20,000, even thousands of angels. The Lord Yahweh Shai is among them as in, as in Sinai in the holy place. All right, so now that, that, that's how the Lord's going to show up. Like how it's describing in Ezekiel with, with, the, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the with the main chariot in the, in the front and the wings. All right, and they all have their duties. They all have their purpose, all right? We want to go back to um, uh, what did we get? Psalm yeah. eighteen and ten. Yeah. All right, um, let's get Psalm ninety one. Ninety one. Sorry, verse one. This Psalm ninety one and one. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. All right, and that secret place is, is really dwelling in these scriptures, man. All right, uh, dwelling. That, that's why it says, uh, "Rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell therein." And woe to the inhabitants of the earth. Everybody is just trying to be 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 a part of this right here. All right. So we're rejoicing at the things that we see coming in the past, man. All right. Because we were driving. It says, where your heart, where your treasure is, that's where your heart shall be also. All right. That's why it says in Jeremiah, flee out of the midst of Babylon. Right. Many not not leave, but get our mind out of his place and focus on heavenly things. All right. So so he that dwelleth, read that again, Baba Kusha. He that dwelleth, this Psalms 91 and 1. Huh. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Boom. I shall abide under the shadow, the huh. covering. All right. That's spiritual and physical. All right. I will say of, of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my power, and him will I trust. So we're going to trust in Yahweh by Shema that he's going to. Uh, 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 fulfill his promise and send these chariots down here to rescue us, man. And the, and the angels that are inside the chariots to do the delivering and reaping. All right. Their duties. Huh. Their Sh duties. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. And who is that fowler? Esau setting up traps. One of his traps by, is, is a iconoclasm by painting images of the angels having wings and things like that. Uh, creating a stumbling block for a lot of people. There's a lot of people that still think the angels have wings and 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 and, and things like that. And from the noise and pestilence, he shall cover thee with his feathers. All right, the noise and pestilence. All right, um, the uh, yeah, con the destruction. You know, so and he's go he go deliver thee from the snare of the fowler, the trap that Esau set up, which is what the hour of temptation. And ultimately, the 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 the, uh, hey, the climax of it all, the, the missiles, uh, the noise and pestilence. It says, verse four, he shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thy trust. All right, and he covered thee with his feathers, meaning the angels giving the angels charge of you over thee, God. and under his feathers she, the, we uh, slack. Read that again. God. verse four, he shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thy trust. God. All right, so under his wings thou shalt trust. Keep going. And wings being the chariots. 
His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. And this is uh, verse 3. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. Fine. And he shall, the, shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Fine. Thou shalt not be afraid from the terror by night, nor for the arrow that fleeth by, by day. All right, Slocky, the terror by, the terror by night is, is the martial law troops, and the arrow by day is, is the destruction, all right, the missiles. All right. Verse 6, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness. For right, well, the, the point was, go back, the, the point was in four Con. with the feathers and the wings, Con. all right? So now, so understanding that, the feathers and the wings. The feathers being the angels and the wings being the chariots. All right. God, and what back that up is verse 11. For Son. he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Son. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. And that's the angels and, and, and those those feathers hey, uh, keeping um, charge over thee. Man. All right. Um, yeah. Go back to Ezekiel 1 and 7. This is Ezekiel. This is back in Ezekiel chapter 1 and verse 7. And their feet were straight feet, and the sole of their feet was like the sole of a cow's foot, and they sparkled like the color of burnished brass. And they had the hands of a of a man under their wings on their four sides. All right, so their hands up underneath, meaning the power of Yahweh was 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 um Power in those chariots. They don't need no gas, no nothing like that. Okay. They were powered by your um by your howl. All right, read that one more time. Verse eight. And they had the hands of a man under their wings on their four sides. Uh huh. Okay. And so so on their four sides. So the power of these angels, this fleet of chariots, right, in the V formation and battle formation, had the wings on each side, meaning they had their coverings, meaning two angels right here and two angels right there. And that right. clearly shows that the wings are not on a, a man's back, you right? Know? You know, and what that's not what's causing them to fly. Right. And this is verse nine: the wings were joined one to another; they turned not when they went; they went every one straight forward. All right, so they they came to do business, man. They followed the lead chariot; they didn't turn wherever they went. All right, um, we get Isaiah chapter six, verse one. Come on. It's Isaiah chapter six and verse one. In the year that King Josiah died, uh -huh. I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne. All right, so this is the vision that um, Isaiah saw, okay? High and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. All right, and that's the spirit, and that's the spirit of Yahweh by Shem and Shai. Of, of of that's the spirit of Yahweh Shai being, being poured among all flesh. All right, all right, all right, all right and, and and cleaving unto the elect. All right. Above it stood the seraphims. Uh -huh. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face. All right. So each uh, each one had six wings. Right. Six chariots. With two he covered his face. And with and with twain. He covered his feet. And two, he covered his feet. All right. Two in, two in front, two in back. All right. And with twain, he did fly. All right. And, and, and he flew upon, and two, he flew. All right. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. All right. And that's how the Lord's going to show up. The glory of his father with his glory and the glory of the holy angels on them chariots. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, let me get our Revelation 19 and 14. It's Revelation chapter 19 and verse 14. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, mm. clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Right. And fine linen represents righteousness, right. man. And that's how the Lord's going to show up in righteousness <clears throat> on those chariots, man. Just like um, anytime you, you have references, um, um, what is that? Um, shall entertain angels unaware? Yeah, shall entertain angels unawares. All right, anytime you had an accounts where, where in the, look at in the book of Tobit, 
when Tobias went on a journey uh, for his father, all right, and he was accompanied by Raphael, Raphael Yaala. He, he didn't, he didn't, he, he looked just like a man because he would have known he was an angel if he had wings coming out of his back. And, huh. uh, and yeah, right, so, so, I mean, <laughs> even, even with, um, on the book of Judges, um, you, you would be aware at that point. You would be aware that it was an angel, right? This Hebrews 13 and 2. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Son, so thereby some have entertained angels unawares, man. Okay. So if they had wings in their back, like, you know what I'm saying? You would understand, you would know that it was an angel. Yeah. But no, they said they had the likeness of a man, of men. So that's exactly exactly how they look when they look. Revelations one and thirteen uh, to seventeen gives the description of Yahweh Shai, the top, the, 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 the what right up under Yahweh. He didn't have no wings on his back. He could fly. So he explains that though when he flew up on top of his chariot in the um in in, in Second Ezra chapter thirteen. All right, but there's no there's no in, nowhere given in the scriptures where the angels have wings on their back, where or the angels have wings on their body. The wings represent the chariots, and that's it. Period. Right. All right, we got any more scriptures? That's, that's all I got on that. That's all pretty right. much clear. All right, so just for some edification purposes, man, to um, to um, just to clarify that the angels do not have wings, man. The wings represent the chariots. All right, all right Lord, what is lesson on edifying to serve the purpose? And with that, like say, Kyle, Kyle, Eliam, Eliam, La, La, Yahweh, Yahweh, Bahashem, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Bahashem, Ha, Ha, Raka, Raka, Kadash, Kadash, Ma, 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 Ma. Double honors to the elder apostles, the great millstone, and my elder Harold Wine as well. Salutations to the icon that are pushing the truth, the sincerity and truth, and peace and blessing to the men, women, and children that believe in the name of Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shai. Shalom. Shalom.